Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tales from the Sticky Dragon. We're here with a very special, very touching, very uh, emotional Between the Tales episode. It's your regular casting crew. I'm your dungeon master. My name is Gustavo Sarola, and I'm joined by our four players. As always, please introduce yourself, players. It's me, Barbara Dunkelman, the very emotional Elga Von Brath, yeah. who is a uh, female half-elf vampire barbarian. It's me, Blaine Gibson, a chip, I play Chip Haney. He's a tiefling rogue. At the, uh, why is this emotional? That threw me as well. What is going on? <laughs> it is I, Chris Damaris, who plays Barney Varney, the old man human cleric. And he's crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm John Reiser, and I play Meti Confucius, who is the Erica Kringos monk. Shows no emotion. Yep. <laughs> Only for Jacques. Yeah. yeah. If you remember, at the end of our previous episode, we wrapped up. You guys managed to escape the cavern with Skelligon as it was collapsing. Made your way back to town, encountered Uyghur, and boarded a train bound for Karkasuk. And you all were resting on the train. And as you were resting, you all heard the sounds of screeching iron rails, followed by a crash. You all tumbled in the train, felt around trying to gather your bearings, and you felt sweltering sand running through your fingers and everything went black. Let's go ahead and kick this episode off. Everyone go ahead and roll me perception checks. That's 14. 21. 12. I rolled a, uh, a 14 on my perception for Elgar. Twins. There it is. We'll start with Barney. Barney, you lift your gaze and see uh, a sweeping panorama of endless desert sand bathed in a golden sunrise. Scattered all around you are fragments of metal, glass, and wood, you turn around and see the remaining wreckage of two train cars that have tumbled off the train tracks. Chip and Elga says the same thing. And Matid, your keen Aarakocran eyes, perceive a little more than uh, your compatriots. You don't see any sign of the train nor other passengers in the vicinity, but you do notice traces of gunpowder and scorch marks along the train car's decimated wheels. And you also notice a flock of vultures circling overhead, clearly eyeing the four of you as their next meal. You also take note of the train tracks fairly obscured with sand that seem to be heading south. And lastly, you spot what could be the remains of some supplies in the train car wreckage. I only listen to a flock of seagulls, not you vultures. <laughs> Scatter, get, go, go away. Does anyone think that we are, you know, the main characters? People are always after us and trying to <laughs> capture us. We're <laughs> so popular in the land of Grotet. So the description you had of the wheels, were you trying to describe something that looked like sabotage? Maybe. Sabotage. Oh. Normally, gunpowder and wheels don't mix. You know something, Gus? I don't know much about how trains work, so I'm open to, like, possibilities of there being things that I don't know with their ingenuity and everything like that. But, yeah, imagine not the best thing to mix. Maybe it was a mining accident. They were out here looking for a gold, and then kablooey. You said there were scorch marks on the sides of the train? Yes, Matid noticed scorch marks along the train car's wheels. Mm, I'd like to have a word with whoever was driving. <laughs> well, they're long gone. No. Where'd they like, go? Like gone, gone, or like, like ooh, they, they left. The only remains you see here are the two train cars. Like the rest of the train is nowhere to be found. Oh, gotcha. Oh. So, oh. Wait, it got decoupled maybe? I missed that. So that means that, yeah, yeah, what Barbara just said. We got decoupled from the rest of the train. All you all you see are two train cars here. Oh right, yeah. okay, yeah. And is the alchemist around? Make a perception check, Mister Alchemist. Ooh, twenty-two. Um, no, you do not see the alchemist uh, anywhere. In fact, you don't see anyone else besides your your party members here. Hmm. This is a big mess. They're the tracks that we would have been on if we'd stayed on. We're still going south, but they're getting obscured by sand. Correct. And we don't see Bupkis else around us, as far as like. Uh, civilization or anything like that um no just vultures <laughs> okay so i go i fly up to go ask the vultures for direction oh <laughs> uh-oh mud could ask him uh matid can fly up but unfortunately cannot ask matid switch sides we're on our own team I'm matid begins circling now. the party oh, God. Yeah. Matid, no, do squares do triangles <laughs> matid's the most dangerous of them all <laughs> it seems that we are uh, a bit stranded in this desert uh so i suppose we should start uh working towards survival uh, necessities um, might i suggest we actually look in the train car to see if there's any supplies that we should take with yeah. us yeah yeah gus you said you said there were supplies strewn about yeah okay 
Then everybody loot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mateed starts looking through stuff. Mateed, make an investigation check to see what you find. Can I as well? Yeah, but let me deal with Oof. Mateed real fast first, and then uh, you're not we, gonna have to deal very, one. very much. Oh, Five. There's a lot of sand. I don't know. It gets everywhere. <laughs> it's really annoying. You hate oh. it. Yeah, uh, Barney. Uh, why don't you roll me an investigation check since you asked as well? Hmm. One. <laughs> I found some gonna, sand in my eyes. We're going to die in the desert. Barney found a rock and is convinced that it, it means something to him. Chip will, chip will take a look. Let's take a look, Chip. Come mm-hmm. on, Chip. Watch out. 14. Okay. Better. Yeah, you do a little better. You find all of your equipment. Like all, right. all of our equipment or just Chip's? Specifically his. So his fanny pack. My fanny. Yeah. Oh, thank God. In addition, you find a walking cane as well. Barney. Yeah. I'll just walk this to you because I don't know that you could walk to me. Here, here you go. As you're walking over to Barney with the cane, you notice that there's an inscription on the walking cane that says uh, property of the alchemist. I was going to say, I thought oh. the alchemist had a walking cane. Yeah, because you have a, a walker, right? Yeah, Not I was wondering cane. that myself. Does Barney have his walker? No, it's missing. Okay, oh. Barney, I got my old men confused, but you can have this in the meantime while we oh. find your uh, that they're a walker of yours. Well, this is really nice. I like it. You think you actually do like this better than your walker for moving around, Barney. You feel like you're more nimble and you can move around more quickly. Oh. Wow. Less cumbersome than a, than a walker. Yeah. Can I investigate it to see what qualities are different? Does it have a sword inside of it? Oh, make an arcana check. No, he's not sure if there's a sword in it. 11. There's something special about this walking cane. Metagame-wise, it adds plus 10 to your movement. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. Golly, I should have held That's on to that. That's Kane's work. You know, everyone's <laughs> looking around, I guess I'll be a team player. And yes, please. To... Make an investigation check, please, Elga. I'm sorry in advance. You, you can't it's... do any worse than, uh, than Barney did. Actually, she technically can. Negative one on investigations. I rolled a three, which is a, with a minus one, so it's a two. Cool. <laughs> well, you didn't do the worst. Didn't do worse than Barney. Shockingly. You all look over and Elga's like in a cartoon, you know, when the ostriches have their head in the sand. <laughs> yeah. She stuck her head into the sand to look around, unable to find anything. Hey. Here, guys. Sorry, bad luck. Elga, it's like a beach party. We're all out here, summer, having the fun. Woohoo. That is the weirdest headstand I've ever seen. Is Jacques with me? Yes. Jacques seems rather unperturbed by the entire ordeal. He's uh, taking us a, a cat nap. He would okay. be unperturbed. He's got a giant litter box. Look at this place. He's pooping. He's pooping. He's peeing. He's having a great old time. <laughs> Can I try and coax Jacques into trying to investigate the stuff? See, Jacques, see what you can find for, <laughs> for me. I need, I need my stuff. Sure. Uh, Jacques yawns and does one of those cat stretches where he sticks his two front paws out and his butt's up in the air. Oh, good yeah. stretch. Yeah, real good. Real big good. Stretch. Real big stretch. Walks around and begins pawing at some sand that's not too far from you, Matid. Okay, I investigate that sand. You find your equipment is buried there. In addition to your equipment, you find a a small key. Oh, does the key have anything recognizable about it? Like Like a decorative end or an inscription on it? It has like a lantern etched into it. Okay, does anybody recognize where this key goes? No, but I'm sure something will come up at some point that tells us where it's supposed to go. So maybe we'll just hold on to it. Okay. I try and look around to see if I see anything that has a lock that looks like the key. A chest, a door on one of the fallen over train cars, a locket. Make a uh, a investigation check. That's a 16. So, you you know, you're poking around and, you know, you, you all have been looking around close to the sleeper car that you all were ejected from. And uh, Matid has the idea to look around a little more to investigate where this key goes and uh, heads over to the other car that's also derailed and notices that there is a indeed a locked door on it. I, I use the key. You uh, use the key and the padlock on the door uh, pops open. I go in. Inside the smaller car, there's four small chests. Okay. Wait, what is this room? What is this car? The caboose. Is it the caboose? It's the caboose. It's painted okay. red. Look at it. I check the chests. I'm curious. I'm a curious little birdie. You open up the first one. It's unlocked, and there's an ornately designed rug inside of it. Mm, That's not very helpful. Well, then you want to look at the rug. Maybe it's a magic carpet. Magic carpet. Ooh. (laughs) Got to be careful you don't get sand on it. You know how hard it is to get sand out of a rug? Man. That's not that. If you got a good vacuum, you know. (laughs) 
Do you have a good vacuum right now, Elka? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am good at sucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vampire joke. A vampire. Yeah, I know. I got it. Uh, I unfurl the rug to witness the splendor that is going to be an amazing design on it. Oh, it's beautiful. It looks like it could be sitting in the finest palace. I saw nothing. This is a rug. Okay, next chest. You open up the next chest and there's an ear horn, you know, like uh, people put up to their ear when they're hard of hearing oh. to listen to stuff. Someone that is the point of that. all this stuff. That okay. Might improve someone's like senses or something like that. Can I join Matit in the caboose? Yeah, a very spry, very quick Barney uh, <laughs> enters the caboose uh, uh, along with you, Matit. Oh. Do the Charlie Chaplin thing where he, you know, whoop. He smelled loot and came running. Yeah, that's when Chris bleeds into all of his characters. Mm. Um, <laughs> does the ear horn have anything uh, on it? Like, a, like wax? any filigree? Well, that's not what I was going oh. for. I was going for more like decorative filigree or, or insignia or anything on it. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's it's of high quality. It's not, you know, just some cheap ear horn. Looks like it's made out of fine materials and is, you know, rather ornately decorated. I put it to my ear. You can hear uh, a lot more clearly. You hear the sound of shuffling in the sand, uh, uh, <laughs> quickly approaching you as B Barney turns the corner. Well, hello, Mr. Bird. Perhaps you would uh, appreciate this ear horn, uh, Barney. For, oh. uh, I do not know if your hearing is going in your older years, but uh, maybe this could help. Everyone's being so nice to me today. Is it my birthday? Who else has been nice to you? Oh, you got a cane. <laughs> you got a cane. Yeah, you got the alchemist cane. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just recognizing that we have an, a senior you citizen out in the desert. You guys are being Well, when you see old man accessories, you give them to the old oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so it's an ear horn and old man accessory. It is. <laughs> yeah, what? Huh? Where's the magnifying glass next? <laughs> <laughs> I open up the other chest, the third one. The next chest, you open it up, and there's a glass orb that's bound in brass inside of it. Oh, wait, a glass bound in brass. Yeah, it's like a glass orb that has like brass encircling it, kind of holding like on the outside of the sphere. I shake it. Surely that's not important. I mean, <laughs> I'm hoping one of these chests has like a portable dirigible or something. <laughs> you shake it and uh, uh, a small light illuminates inside. Oh, Ooh. We all have dark vision. This is worthless. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's not it's not enough to light a passage. It's a very dim light. Do I recognize this as a, a common device that I would have knowledge about, or is this something that is rare and unique? Make a survival check. I'm a survivor. I rolled a fifteen. <laughs> You think that, you know, if the train tracks are continuing to the south, you think the little light inside is pointing to the north. Oh. Neato. Is it a compass? <laughs> Could be. So it appears like it's pointing north. Okay. We got a compass, everybody. Next chest. Let's let's wrap this up. Toot, toot. <laughs> and you're, you're holding on to all these things, right, Matid? No, I gave the ear horn to the old man. Right. But I, I guess I have the rug under my arm, and I put the glass orb in that arm as well, and I'm opening up the last chest. <laughs> the last chest contains a blue crystal earring wrapped with a delicate copper wire. Neat. Can I investigate these and ch check to see if they have any magical qualities? You should ask Matid because they're the one holding it. May I inspect this? These? I bet, of course. I present them all just in my dump wings. Dump it all too. on Barney. Yeah, I just <laughs> throw the rug over him. No, I, pre I present it. I present it all in my arms. Wings. Can I do like an arc see if there's magical or I recognize them for anything? Sure, I guess make an arcana check. Well, that's a one. That's two ones. I think you have to leave the, the session now. Yeah. No, this is a uh, high quality loot here, Barney, at discount prices. Wow. Maybe Matid should investigate since they're holding them. <laughs> I've been trying. Is there a, I, I checked the glass. What did I roll a thing on? I rolled a survival on the glass orb. Yeah. Blue crystal earring was the last thing I found. I think we don't right. really know what the carpet or the earring does. So, Elga, maybe we should go help him out. I'll, 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 I'll exit the car with the stuff and say, this is what I found in the car. Does, it, does anybody recognize any of this? Throw me the carpet. I toss the rug to Chip. <laughs> I want to investigate the carpet that just knocked me off my feet. Yeah, what are you looking for? Or, I mean, what's, magic, what's your angle magic. here? Magic, you want to look at magic? Okay. You didn't describe what was on the rug, if there was any design to it. Is that because there is nothing, like, it is not a tapestry of any kind? 
if you want to peek behind the DM screen, there's not a, a, a description for it. So okay. I just I so was I was vague. On, I was vague on purpose. It, it really ties the room together. <laughs> hey. It's a big Lebowski reference. Yeah. Since you said you want to check for magic, make a um, Arcana check. Here we uh, go. Check. That's a sixteen. I want to roll it out and I want to jump on it and just go go move. Cap oh yeah, we should we should roll roll it out and like maybe try standing on it. Yeah, I'm bouncing on it. We, we really, I, really want this to be a flying carpet. I'm, I'm picking up on. Fly! Chip rolls it out, jumps on it, and starts screaming fly, jumping up and down in the air. It's reminiscent of Elga shouting bat, hoping that she takes off. Uh, however, the rug does quickly take to the air with Chip standing on top of it. Wee! I told you it's a magic carpet! If only this was a video <laughs> podcast, people could see the absolute genuine delight that is lit up Barbara's face right now. <laughs> I can show you the world. <laughs> Shining, shimmering splendor. Part of me believes that Gus and Micah are just typing back there, being like, yeah, let's make it a magic carpet, but just for this one moment. Just let it be a darn uh, flying carpet. Give it to them. Let the kids have what they want. I want to pull up next to Elga and say, do you trust me? And I'll hold no, out my hand. No, but I'm guessing on anyways. <laughs> so do we all fit on this rug? It's a four by six rug, so not all of you would be able to fit on it. Mateed flies, though. Sorry, Mateed, you gotta fly with normal wings. <laughs> <laughs> Mateed slashes the rug in half. No! <laughs> <laughs> it could have been sentient. Wow, now we each have, now we have two. <laughs> now so, it's a runner. <laughs> I just want to confirm before we like start moving away from this place. We still don't have our equipment, right? Like, I think only Chip does. Mati does. I found and Mateed. mine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We Thanks need to, to my, my kitty. Find Barney Nelgas. Does that mean I have no, like, axe or anything, like a weapons? You, may, you can search again. You can make another investigation check if you want to give it a, another now shot. Now you've got a bird's eye view. Yeah, I would like to give it another shot. <laughs> I did as well. Yeah, go for it. Is it just investigation again? Yeah. Man, I want to not roll badly on investigation. I rolled Come the 17. On. All right, let me deal with uh, Elgar no. fast first. It was on the 18. I saw it in slow motion. He it was on the 18 and it rolled onto a two. <laughs> now, Minus one. I'm going to use my is... inspiration die because. No, oh, God. no. Oh, God. <laughs> I want my stuff. Elga's over it. <laughs> I'll help. I'll help. Elga's Don't. just fed up. I can help look for your stuff, Elga. I just, I want to investigate just one thing. I'm going to investigate in addition to Elga to find her axe. Okay, I rolled a 14. Okay. Is that, does that do it? Okay, yeah. Elga, this time you are able to track down your equipment and find it all. You know, it's, it seems like it's all, all of your, all of your equipment, all of your stuff's wrapped up between a, a couple of broken armchairs. Oh, is that where it was originally? When you were on the train, no, but you know, you all were in a wreck, so yeah. you know, things fly around. As you're pulling your gear out that's entangled with these two broken armchairs, some coins fall out from between the cushions. Nice. Elga takes it. Yeah, you have five copper and two silver. I put the earring and the glass orb in my satchel. Okay. Now that Elga's found her stuff, I think, Barney, you rolled a 17 on your search for your things. Yeah, Barney, you are able to find all of your stuff this time. Maybe uh, the ear horn helped you find it. <laughs> and in addition, as you're digging up, trying to get all of your stuff, you find a couple of toilets that are also buried in the sand. Toilets? Yeah, two of them. Lucky. Can can you describe these toilets? Are they like <laughs> describe a toilet? Hey Gus, describe the toilet. <laughs> well, like porta potties? Like from the train. Oh. We go potty on the train sometimes, Chris. You know, you would think that some of the cars on the train might just have a hole that goes over the track below, but these are actually nicer. These actually have a little bit of water in them. Wow. Water, oh. we better keep this is better. We better save this. The water is in the uh the the back of the toilet, not water in like the basin. Mm. Correct. There's a tank. Yes. Okay. Barney, we are in the middle of the desert. You might need to store that water. You don't know if we're going to run out or not. I agree. I'd hydrate if we, if I had the chance. Do we have a canteen of any sort? I think in our equipment, we often, you have like a water skin. Yeah. Yeah. I'll fill up. This was a joke to make Barney drink poop water. I don't want him to actually drink the <laughs> well, water. This is base. It's in the basin. That's just like sink water. Yeah. It's okay. It's drinkable. There were two carts that were broken up. Did we check both of them? It was the sleeper and the caboose. Exactly. The first one was the sleeper cart, which is kind of where all of your stuff was. And the second one was the caboose, which was locked and Matid had the key for. Well, this looks like quite a mess. And Bar could Barney start casting mending on different on the caboose? <laughs> sure. I will say the caboose was 
more intact than um, the sleeper car. But I mean, they're both messed up. I think Barney's just going to start trying to repair everything like a little piece at a time. <laughs> All right. Uh, Barney sets off with busy work, putting <laughs> things back together, <laughs> making things right. Hey, <laughs> hey there, Mateed. Uh, can I take a look at that there blue earring? I don't think we got to the bottom of what that, that thing did. I do not think we did. I uh, display the earring to Chip. Can I do a uh, Arcana check? Some sort of magic? Sure, make an Arcana earring, check. Too. That's strange. It's not a pair. Uh, that's a seven, I think. Carol would have liked this earring. <gasps> oh, God, my wife! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I even did a check on it. How about I do a little bit of a, a sure, monastic, go for it. Yeah, because I think only check. Barney did, right? Mm-hmm. Now he's just humming while he fixes trains. <laughs> 14. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you closely inspect the earring and you realize this is a special earring. Oh. If someone's wearing it, they can use the message spell. Massage spell? Oh. Barbara, you lived up like you know what that is. What like is it? Like a sending stone kind of situation? Or is it like you could relay a message to somebody and make them think that? It's kind of like a sending stone. However, the range is much shorter. Is it also like 25 words? No, but so it's essentially you can point at someone within like 120 feet and whisper and they are the only ones who can hear it. Do they know the source of the message and whatnot? Or is it, could it be like it could a- be in your voice, right? Yeah, like do they know who it's coming from? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you. It's not, you know, like something in their head. It's it's a whisper from you, so they wouldn't know. a good thing for us to communicate with if we need yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Or to creep people out if you're going to try to kill them in the shadows. I have discerned what this uh, earring uh, is able to do, is able to uh, allow us to communicate k- k- to each other uh, with subterfuge. Unfortunately, I do not have uh, ears, so with someone with ears like one. I do. I give it to Elga. I have actually a piercing in my ear, too, that I could put it in. I don't know if this nice. is a clip-on or if it goes through the hole, but... <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it, it's a, it goes through the hole. It's an actual earring. Could I put it on? Yeah, if you want to put it on your inventory, you can label it earring of message. And do I have to be wearing it to use it, or could I just be holding it? You have to be wearing it. It's a, like a enchanted wearable item. That's cool, though. Is there a charge? Like, how often can you send a message? It has five charges. However, it regains 1d4 plus one every day at dawn. It's it's an actual item. If you look for it in uh, D&D Beyond, you can see all of the info. Neat. A crystal earring wrapped with delicate copper wire. Five charges while wearing it. You could use an action to expend one charge and cast the message spell. Yeah. All right. So the, the rug allows us to fly. The earring allows us to speak. And this seems to be a bit of a compass. Does the air horn do anything special? I go up to Barney and I yell into his ear, Does the air horn do anything special? <laughs> On a meta game level, does it like, can I hear further or like how does it impact actual hearing? Yeah, if you were hard of hearing, you think that it could focus your, your hearing in and help you hear a little better. And uh, Micah says that, yeah, it's a, you should be able to find ear horn in D&D Beyond. Okay. Nice. So the air horn does nothing special. That we know of. I fly up as high as my little wings can carry me and try to get some reconnaissance of where we are at. I load the kids on the bus and I also fly up with my special (laughs) magic carpet. (laughs) So FYI, if you want to uh, add that to your inventory, it should be as carpet of flying. And this is the four by six version. (laughs) So from a metagame perspective, it can only hold 400 pounds. Okay. Barney, how much you weigh? Well, I'm carrying 98 pounds. Plus, I imagine Barney doesn't weigh too much, so probably around 200. I don't know. Small man. Is it four by eight? Four by six. Four by six. I'm going to add it, but that does not mean it is mine. It is the team's magic carpet. Yeah, you've got it. Uh, so basically, it can carry about two of us is what it really is going to do. Barney's weight in D&D Beyond is listed as 115. And then, yeah, 98 pounds of gear. So you're looking at 213 total. Oh, man. But what about little Elga? She's she's so tiny. But <laughs> Elga weighs 75 pounds in D&D Beyond And you're carrying 29 pounds of stuff So Elga's about 100 I'm somehow carrying 88 pounds And I'm like 190 I love being a monk I'm carrying 14 and a half pounds and I, don't got much. <laughs> I don't got much I got, the, I got these fists So it could carry either mean Elga or mean Chip Sounds like Yeah 
I like how uh, no matter what, Barney's on there. Or yeah. sorry. Yeah. It could, all, it could also carry sorry, sorry. Chip and Elgar. I, mean, I, mean, that's, I meant that's sort of, I don't think Ian Chip can ride on it together. Heads I win, tails you lose. <laughs> is what I meant to say. It could carry either me and Helga or Chip and Elga. Yeah. And basically a combination of two of our party members. All right. I fly up in the sky and see what we're looking at. I'm tired of weight math. The desert seems to stretch on in every direction. Occasionally, in the distance, you see dunes and, of course, the train tracks running off into the distance. It's very unremarkable. It just seems like it's endless in every direction. I come back down and try to gather the group together. What do we do, Matid? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we doing? There doesn't seem to be anything in sight for us to uh, take shelter in. So uh, my only suggestion for plan of action is to perhaps uh, follow the train tracks towards our destination we were going to in the first place. Well, uh, didn't we have something that said it was pointing to north? So maybe that's a clue of where we should be going. Is that where the train tracks are headed? I mean, the, tr the train tracks were heading. We were heading south and there are tracks going south and then there are tracks going north. So, yes, I would say... It either could be pointing in a special direction or just north for the sake of north, like a compass. Uh, but no, I don't know. know where north is. Matit, just a real, real quick sidebar. If you want to add that, it's called the orb of direction. Okay. I do a little bit of like flying like laterally and see if it continues to face north or it continues to face towards a specific direction. As you fly around, it seems to continue to point to north. Okay. So, good bit of science to figure that out. So, Barney's been repairing the train car. Yeah. They're off the tracks, right? Yeah. Perhaps we you could combine power of all of us, get the cars back on hmm. the track. What's the strength pulling of the carpet? Because maybe someone could fly and, like, tow the train, essentially, behind it. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I would say it's still, like, 400 pounds. Oh, like so cannot pull a train. <laughs> Yeah, the weight limit is still, you know, it doesn't take as much force as you would think to move a train car, but I think it is still more than 400 pounds. Yeah, if we're on it, we're going to add weight. So, yeah, it has a 400-pound pull <laughs> capacity. I don't know how I'm supposed to help in this situation because I now have Primal Path, and I chose Form of the Beast as a barbarian. Cool. So when I rage, I could transform, and I have, like, four different beast powers, essentially. Oh. I have a beast bite. I have claws. I have a tail action and a tail reaction but i don't think those really come in handy with <laughs> unless i want to bite the train <laughs> i was like i was hoping one of those was going to be like she, she turns into the bear Push. and the bear's strong is there like a particular animal that you turn into or you do you just have these things now on elga's body i think i just have them so elga has a canonical a tail well when elga rages these things appear oh and then, you know, when uh, these forms are taken. Tail twins. Tail, tail twins. Do bats have tails? Not really. <laughs> I think they have, don't they have like little ones? They have like a tiny no. little guy. They got nubs. Yeah. Yeah, that's like a the extended tailbone. Tail twins. Oh, they look like rat tails. Weird. Chip's just shaking his butt until until someone acknowledges tail, twi tail twins. They are rodents, aren't they? I'm just going to keep ignoring. <laughs> I'm kidding. Tail twins! Tail twins! Yeah. Oh, wait, that doesn't have one because I'm not raging yet, though. Oh. So. Not yet, you are. Tail twins! And I start poking her. I'll go rage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is the. So, hmm. I think what we need to do is go out to the middle of the desert, okay? I, I walk, I take a step, I pause. I take two leaps, pause. I shuffle, pause. This is called sand walking, okay? If you've yeah, read the I was novel. Waiting for it. As soon as, as soon as Gus said there were dunes out now in the I'm distance, going I knew to that find triggered. Shai Halud. So I'm going to start pounding rhythmically on the ground. You already made your dune references in our last campaign. You don't get to do it's it. It's a different time, a different place. I'm pounding <laughs> on the ground. I'm waiting for the for the sandworm. I'll do a perception check to see if a sandworm is my, coming my way. Blaine is still a perception check. It's a hitting his hand on the ground. <laughs> There, there is no sand war. You don't think there's a sand war model. Okay, we are not on Arrakis. We are not on Arrakis. <laughs> and then I walk back. <laughs> God, I don't even know what we should be doing. We're just in the desert. I was going to ask, uh, now at level three, I could use some of my inner bat powers as well, which is keen hearing. Ooh. Could I try using that to see if I hear anything in the distance? Yeah, so keen hearing gives you advantage on perception checks that rely on hearing. 
So make a perception check with advantage and see if you hear anything in any distance. 11. And the second one, 19 plus 3, 22. In the distance out in one of the directions, you think you hear voices. Can I tell what direction? To the west. Guys, guys, team huddle, team huddle, quick. <laughs> are we, are we uh, whispering? Yes. I, hu- I huddle. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, I huddle as well. Don't ask me how I know, but I hear voices to the west. So maybe we should go that way. Or I turn, maybe I we turn should avoid chip. The little one's going crazy. She's hearing voices. <laughs> <laughs> so sad to watch at such a young age. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, so young. <laughs> 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 so little, tiny, not experiencing life for very many years. Uh, I mean, perhaps we should uh, investigate the west then. This could be a good idea, unless it's dangerous voices. What are they saying? Oh, you know, they're just having a conversation I could totally decipher. <laughs> uh, we got nowhere else to go off of, so I, I like this idea. Why doesn't uh, Chip and Bonnie take the rug, okay. and I shall carry you, Elga, and we shall fly that direction? I say we fly high so that they, you know, they might not look up, and then we don't draw attention to ourselves. She can't wait. Can me and Chip, are we over the weight? We're over 400 pounds between the two of us. Are you? Yeah. I think you're 200, and I'm I'm a little over 200. Mm. 115. You're 213. Chip is... Just leave some of your loot behind. Yeah, just 277. Like, I can't leave this toilet. Oh, 277. Wow. <laughs> if we lose the toilet... You're not carrying the toilet. If we lose the toilet, does that bring us down? Can we just yada no, yada I through this? I actually don't have the toilet in my... Uh, in the toilet. You, like, you both try to get on, and uh, it drags along the ground. It's moving, but it's not actually getting off the ground. This is really sad. Hey, Could Mateen uh, carry one of the boys? I don't know what my carrying capacity is. What is my carrying I capacity? I it's not 200-something. Math! Well, we, sh- we should figure this out now. What can, can I carry one of my party members? Your carrying capacity is your strength score multiplied by 15. Whoa! All right. My carrying capacity is 255. Oh, so you could carry... Well, that's me. Yeah, you could carry Barney. All right. Then Elga and Chip shall take the rug, and I will carry Barney. Yeah, let's go, rug crew! And Elga Yay. high fives Chip. Tail twins! Tail twins! Yes. So I don't know what you're talking about. Tail twins! Guys, I think Chip... Chip is experiencing some type of, like, heat. <laughs> yeah, know, desert madness stroke. has set in. Mr. Bird, thank you very much. Stop calling me Mr. Bird. It's, it's not, not in my name, Mr. and I'm not a Mr., so please stop referring yeah. that way. And I fly off but with, with Barney. Big Bird. <laughs> I, I drop. I drop Barney. Drop the oh, bird. No. I drop Barney. I drop Barney. I'm done. Oh, no. <laughs> I tried being respectful, and he kept doing it. So uh, this is not Mateed's style. Mateed does not take disrespect. So I drop Barney. I meant no disrespect. I apologize. Can I wave at Mateed and then Barney can switch with me? It w- unfortunately, I have to break up the tail twins for now. We will return. I think you're too heavy for Mateed to carry, are you not? No, I think they can do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I take chip. Thank you, Mateed. I respect you. <laughs> All right, Barney, hop aboard. And you better not disrespect me or it's going to be trouble. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> Kindest regards, my rankly regulars. Go follow us at Stinky Dragon Pod. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Plus, if you post on social media using hashtag Stinky Dragon Pod, we might name an NPC in the show after you. If you love the show and want more, go check out our new TikTok exclusive series, Dungeon Dive. It goes behind the scenes about how we made our first D&D campaign, The Infinite Interns. From character creation to my very own juicy DM tips, you'll find it all on Dungeon Dive over on our TikTok account at Stinky Dragon Pod. Can't get enough Stinky Dragon Puppet videos? Well, good news, we have a brand new Stinky Puppet series coming soon. Stay tuned to our socials for more updates. If you missed out on the Stinky Dragon Dice at RTX, you can go check out store.roosterteeth.com on August 3rd to grab yourself a set. Now that we're in the thick of summer, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals to support sunny, active days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track reaching your goals. Too busy with summer plans to cook, but you want to make sure you're eating well? Well, with Factor, you can skip the extra trip to the grocery store, chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up too, all while still getting flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy, get back outside, soak up that warm weather. And if you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals this summer, you can try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. 
This July, get factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals, enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Head over to factormeals.com slash dragon50. Use code dragon50 to get 50% off. That's code dragon50, the number five and the number zero, at factormeals.com slash dragon50 to get 50% off. Abandoned carts, rejected payments, spotty support. If you're selling online and something just isn't working, you deserve an upgrade. It's time for Shopify. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Doesn't matter if you're just starting out or if you're getting ready for your IPO, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. With Shopify, you're in control of every sales channel from in-person POS systems to all-in-one e-commerce platforms. Once you've reached your audience, Shopify has the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is truly a global force powering Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 170 countries. That is possibility powered by Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash dragon. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash dragon to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash dragon. You all uh, make your way trying to track down the voices that Elga supposedly heard. As you traverse the desert, everyone go ahead and make me a survival check. Matid, actually make this one with advantage because you have the orb of direction. 17. 12. 19. Nat 20. 23. Ooh, everyone. Good rolls. Using Elga's keen sense of hearing, you're able to focus down on the source of the voices. And from the air, you all see a trio of travelers who seem to be standing on large rocks shouting for help. Mm. Mm. Travelers on rocks shouting for help. Rocks that are what, like jutting out from the sand? Correct. Can we perceive if there's something attacking them? I'm assuming they're trying to get away from something that's in the sand. Perhaps a sandworm. I swoop down lower to get a better look. Yeah, you swoop down and it's three humanoid travelers. You swoop down low enough like where they can see you or are you all still trying to like keep uh Yeah, yeah, I want to I want to be able to see like is there movement in the sand? Can I see anything that is attacking them? Gotcha. Make a uh, perception check for me, please, Matid. Ooh, that's a 21. Besides the travelers standing trying to flag you down, uh, you see uh, movement in the sand around the rocks. That's not good. You make out a word that the travelers are yelling. They're yelling, bullet, bullet. Bullet? Yeah. Do I know what that is? Yeah, you've heard tale of it. It's a monster that can move around underground and oh. is very territorial. I thought they were just goat people. <laughs> <laughs> Any relation to Smirsh? Any relation to <laughs> Moldugas. <laughs> I swoop down and I clench. I want to say this. I'm carrying Chip via talons because I got yeah. my wings got to flap. And so I squeeze the shoulder of Chip to uh, get their attention. Blat! <laughs> <laughs> you make that noise, but just out of pain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They begin waving, trying to flag you down, saying, help us, help us escape. I'm kind of in a T-pose, like scarecrow-like yeah. uh, posture, and I just use, like, hands, and I say, hello, how did you get here? I'm I like Chip. how they're in a panic, getting, like, trying to yeah. escape this monster, and you're like, hey, what's up? Well, I'm not in danger. <laughs> <laughs> they're on the rocks. <laughs> they say, we're trying to cross the desert when we were attacked. Oh. What are you doing in the middle of the desert? Yeah. What are you doing in the middle of the desert? I asked you the question first. I'm also flying. I, I don't need to answer your questions. If you want help, answer my questions. Oh, yeah, that what they said. <laughs> We're traveling, just trying to get from one settlement to another. Do, are they all three, um, just so I can have like uh, the, the image you're painting here, are they all three uh, humans? Are they different creatures? What are they? I'll say two are human and one's an abrellion. How powerful are uh, blats? Blats. 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 One of the humans shouts out, we're on a religious pilgrimage. Oh, I look up to, I look up to, to my team. We start flying back to the train. We start flying back. Darn shame about those three survivors, eh? Mati doesn't often uh, work well with religious uh, entities. Now, we, I, uh, what, what to do? The, the non-religious monk? Yeah, I was going to say, you're a monk, aren't I'm, you? I, I, I'm self-taught and I do all, I'm all on my own. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to a congregation or any sort of specific religion. Hey, you guys on the ground, do you got any explosives, bombs, 
C4. Dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> Might Say the, bombs again. Yeah, it might be the best read you've done bombs. yet. Might be the best read you've done yet. No, we don't. Okay. Maybe you could fly us away the way you're flying right now out of range of this bullet. Unfortunately, that is not an option. It's the weight capacity, Matit, is quite sturdy, but not that sturdy. I mean, you're so many folks. Maybe he can carry us one at a time. Oh, it, that's an idea. Okay. Where is the place that is out of range of this monster? If we just head, I don't know, a couple hundred feet southwest, it'll pr we'll probably lose track of us. Mm. Okay. If you have any new level three abilities that could help us, it would be great. I look up to, M to Mateed and I say, perhaps if we combine this monster with the remains of our train cart, we can make a bullet train. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that one. That was good. That was good. I like that I, one. I understand, Gus, you keep asking us to use our new abilities, and I have I don't know what to do in order to help these people with my new abilities. Oh, uh, gotcha. So I am waiting on hoping that these other characters that I'm playing with have special abilities that would help this. I go into one arm mode. I loosen one of my arms from Matid's talons, so I'm just hanging by one arm, and I search for my crossbow, and I have this thing now that I'm level three, and it's called... That's not what it's called. I'm looking for it. That would be really hard to say every time. It's called Assassinate. Ooh. And it's, I have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet, and any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. Ooh. So you're engaging the blet. Yeah. I will also help. I have a level two spells now, so I'll do spiritual weapon, which creates a floating spectral weapon within range, 60 feet. That lasts for, well, it only lasts for one minute. Um, <laughs> but it can attack as a 1d8 plus my spellcasting ability modifier, and I can uh, make it attack with a bonus action. And it can take whatever form I want. That's a great spell. I'll, I'll make it take the form of a big newspaper. Why? Maybe something know. a little bit more uh, deadly. Hmm. What are we accomplishing with said newspaper? Well, I can smack. Well, let's do Chip first because I, he suggested his thing first. So is that that's your plan of action, Chip? Uh, yeah, 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 that'll do. Is it not underground, though? But you can see the sand oh, uh, moving around. Perhaps you could try to coax it up. Yeah, maybe what we can do is I can I can shoot it, get its attention, and then pull it away from the other people, and then Barney and... Elga can carry them back or whatever to the trains. Fairy. Fairy. As you're coordinating, trying to do all of this, a mighty beast emerges from the sand and lets out a loud roar in frustration at the uh, humanoids on the rock. You can see why some people refer to bullets as land sharks as it breaches out from the sand and makes a mighty <laughs> sound. Uh, well, I go rawr, rawr, back and you shoot it, right? And then I shoot it. <laughs> while, while its mouth is open, I try to shoot it in its mouth. Make your uh, attack roll. Do I get any sort of advantage? Because it's it had, it, that was part of the feature thing, was it not? Right. If it has not made an attack and is uh, unaware of your presence. That's the 17. So should I roll again for advantage or? Yeah, why not? Okay, okay, okay. 15, so 17. 17 hits. Okay, and then I believe I crit because it had, well, is it surprised? Is it surprised? Yes. It is okay. unaware of your presence since you are flying in the air. I rolled a five plus two, that's seven. What does a crit entail? Is that just a plus D6, just a six or what? Yeah, if it's crit damage and you would get an additional hit die and the way we do it is maximum on it. So six plus seven, 13. And just for our listeners, can you explain what Assassinate is? You have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet. And any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. Nice. Yeah, so because now I'm level three, that's that's something I unlocked, and I also got a bonus for proficiency, which is I gain proficiency with disguise kit and pro poisoner's kit. I don't think I'm going to be able to poison or disguise against the blah. What I was going to ask, though, is does your assassinate stack with sneak attack? If it's a feature and it's not an action you're taking, then yeah, it sounds like it's a, it's a stack. It doesn't cost an action, right? No, assassinate doesn't. Yeah, so I, uh, I believe that those two would stack with each other. Okay, and as a refresher, sneak attack is once per turn. You can deal an extra 2d6 damage to one creature you hit with an attack with a finesse or ranged weapon if you have advantage on the attack roll. So I'll just roll an additional 2d6. Yep, so we're at 13. Wow, plus eight. So 21 points of damage. Ooh. 
Wow. Yeah, the uh, bullet thrashes around in agony from the ferocity of the crossbow bolt and turns its eyes skyward, leaps up into the air, it leaps 15 feet above the sand towards you all, but uh, you all are uh, a little out of its reach still, and it comes crashing back down into the sand. Barney, did you say you were going to do something as well? Oh, yeah, the, your spiritual weapon. Yeah, so my giant newspaper will smack it. <laughs> I like how that's the sound you make when uh, they start. You start <laughs> yeah, and it has a range of 60 feet. Yeah, you would be able to hit it. So make a melee spell attack. That's a 24. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah, you'd definitely hit it. So go ahead and roll your damage. So it's 1d8 Ooh. plus your spell casting ability modifier, which is 4. Yeah, so I rolled an 8, so that's a 12 damage. As the bullet comes back down and lands on the sand, it howls in agony and stops moving. Oh, we two shot this thing. Wow. Yeah, I was like, I'm ready to prep one of my actions and then... I'll take care of it. I drop Chip down with the people and land myself. They begin thanking you profusely, and they're slowly making their way down off of the rocks. Thank you. We can continue on our way now. Have fun on your pilgrimage. To, no, we uh, hate, wait, hold on. Um, what? <laughs> we are a bit stranded as well in this desert. We were oh. riding, a, we were riding a, a train, and it uh, derailed. And I uh, fixed it. It is technically repaired as far as a carrying vessel without a single engine attached to it for propulsion. No locomotion. That is correct. What is your final destination that you are traversing this desert uh, without any sort of a vehicle? They're listening to you, you know, as they are slowly descending the rocks. And as you're talking to them and asking them this question, they slowly vanish from sight like a mirage. Oh what? my goodness. Yiga clan. <laughs> Were they even there to begin with? I don't know. Is the bullet there? Yes, the bullet carcass is still there. Guys, we all got the, the summertime sadness. The We got the sun madness. We got, we're all going crazy. You know, it's it's very telling that even when we're imagining things, we still are, are all heroes, you know? We still try to <laughs> save people even though we imagine. I guess, okay. You heard voice. Okay, this is so bizarre. I check the rocks for any sign of them or something that was causing an illusion. Make an All investigation check. Heard. Yeah. Uh, well, at first it was just you, Elgo, who heard it. But then, yeah, as you got closer, everyone heard it. We and saw, saw it. Everyone heard yeah. and saw. Yeah. So, yeah. like, it's it's very rare to have, like, a the same illusion. A collective illusion. I rolled a two. That, what rocks? What people? What bullet? I investigate nothing. Can we lower the carpet and look around and also check the carcass of the monster. Yeah, uh, make an investigation check, Barney. 17. You take a look around on the rocks looking for any evidence of the the travelers and you don't really find any evidence of the travelers. However, you do find a shiny brass lamp less wedged in the rocks. Hmm. I think we're going insane. <laughs> uh, does this brass lamp... Probably. Yeah, does it have any... Rub it. I'll rub it. (laughs) Barney, you rub the brass lamp, and as you are rubbing it, two scorpions come out from the lamp uh, and begin stinging you on the hands. No, no. (laughs) My my, my giant newspaper whacks them. (laughs) You whack the scorpions and the brass lamp uh, out of your own hands. Can I see if the brass lamp is magic or just keep scorpions it, in it? it? This doesn't have anything to do with the key that went to the caboose either, does it? It I had a lantern on it. Yeah, it was oh, a lantern. lantern. Gotcha. Metagame perspective, like it looked like the lantern on a caboose, like the lights uh, at the back of a tree. Oh. I wasn't very clear about that. Uh, yeah, make an arcana check, Barney. Hmm, 13. Yeah, it just seems like a standard brass lamp that's filled with scorpions. Oh, I'll keep this, but keep the scorpions inside. <laughs> Huh? How do you kill the scorpions? <laughs> you will you will keep the lamp that is full of scorpions that can come out at any time to bite you. They're my pets. Could Elga try to grab the scorpions and, and crush them with her hands? Oh, sure. I'm going to use my new form of the beast raging. So I'm going to rage. And now I have three rages per long rest. Too. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm going to use one of those. And I'm going to use my form of the beast claws to smack at those scorpions. Ooh. Since Elga's getting so mad and doing this, is this like canonic lore about Elga? Like Elga has like an issue with scorpions or just bugs. I don't like bugs. No bugs. Yeah. She just really hates uh, winds of change and Rocky like hey, a hurricane. <laughs> well, stop eating your Uncrustable and then you'll be able to participate in this audio podcast. Barbara has the floor. I'm eating my PBJ. 
Speaking uh, of funny scorpion references. Yeah, there you go. I thought you were going to do like a Mortal Kombat kind of reference <laughs> or something like that. Uh, oh, she's get, over, get here. over here. Oh, shoot. I stack with this PBJ. Gosh darn it. Go ahead and make uh, an attack roll to see if uh, you hit those scorpions. Okay, it's uh, an 11. What's the what's the AC of these scorpions, Cuss? The AC of a scorpion is 11. So with the claws, you know, your hand actually transforms into a claw, which you can use as a weapon, you know, if your hand is empty. And it deals 1d6 plus 4 slashing damage on a hit. Slashing. And then once on each of your turns, when you attack with a claw using the attack action, you can make one additional claw attack as part of the same action. So, like, Elga gets so mad upon seeing the scorpions, uh, she lashes out with claws uh, and rips the scorpions to shreds. Chip yells, finish him! <laughs> <laughs> well, aggro. The phrasing of that is actually really good because that didn't phrase it as a bonus action. It gets to be lumped into your action, so you get to do that without using a bonus action? Correct. It's part of the same action. Your subsequent extra swipe that you get after doing claw, you get to do that, and it doesn't burn your bonus action either, so you can continue to do a bonus action as well in your yeah. turn. Well, the, the rage is a bonus action, but I guess I only have to do that once. Yeah, 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 but it, but the, I, I meant the subsequent, like, the thing that he said where, like, after you have used it, your next turns, you get to keep doing another claw swipe that doesn't cost anything. Doesn't cost an action? Yeah, the, the two swipes with the claw are part of the same action. So gotcha. you could rage and then attack with the claw twice. Since the rage is your bonus action, uses your bonus action, you're left with your attack action, and both claw attacks come out of that same attack action. Well, while you guys are talking about this, Chip is consoling Barney, who just lost his two brand new pets. <laughs> it's oh. okay, dear friend. It's okay. They like me. I know. I know. Stings of love. They only bite you because they love you. We flew west. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And found these rocks. Mm -hmm. We killed the bullet. Yep. I feel like this this lamp has got to be something. Okay. So we we tried rubbing it and it, we nothing. We did. Uh, and scorpions other than the came scorpions. out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by all means, I'd love Elga to take a look at it. Maybe Elga can decipher something about it. Okay. Here, Barney, hand it to me. There you go. Be careful. There's pets if inside. If you don't, you see what I did to the scorpions. <laughs> <laughs> How are you gonna you do like an Arcana check or what's your angle here, Elga? I guess I'll Arcana. Yeah, make an arcana check. Could I do an athletics check on the lamp? <laughs> you could try to see how far you can throw it. Barbara's just no. looking at the highest numbers on her character yeah. sheet. <laughs> yeah. And it fails, so I got, I got good arcana, so I can chip okay. in. I, I'm can, gonna... I can chip in. The chip, you might need to look at this, but let me take a look to see if I... Is... You know you're in good you shape when the barbarian's making an arcana check to identify oh. an item. I did a 17. There Whoa. You go. Well, joke's on me. Don't I look stupid? Yeah. You do, always. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, don't say that to God. <laughs> don't say that to God. Not another bullet. A giant bullet falls out of the sky right on Chip. And I name it, it Sandra. It reawakens each Chip yeah. hole. <laughs> Sandra bullet. It's also in the sand. Wow, double, double. There you go. So you got a 17 on that Arcana check. You know, you take a look at the lamp and it does not seem remarkable to you. It's just shiny brass lamp. I think I'm going to take it anyways. I think I know what our uh, what our objective is in this episode. We're actually cleaning up the desert by picking up all mm -hmm. these items mm -hmm. that have littered around the desert. That's good. Someone needs to do it, yeah. It's important. Worthy cause. I'm just worried that another train's gonna smack into the back of those two carts and we're gonna cause another derailing. <laughs> I think they fell off the track. Oh, yeah. okay, great. Good, good, good. Maybe we should all, like, check around, see if there's, like, any... Would there be, like, portal or, like, some type of, like... Like, when we found Robert and Francesca's house, it was behind that, like... Oh, like an illusion. Illusion, type, like, a uh, wall. I don't think that's the case here since they all vanished at the same time. Did they move and vanish, or did they just vanish from the place they were standing? They were crawling down the rocks, like, trying to get back down to the ground, and they all just vanished. Were they real? Was anything real? What's real? <laughs> Philosophical. Perhaps some more reconnaissance would help us then decide where to go to next. And Matid flies up and does the big wide circle of the area. Can I go with you? Yes. I take a chip. <laughs> yeah, T-pose your chip. Chip just T-poses ready to be taken up. <laughs> I take chips. We have double eyes. Yeah, you both of you uh, make perception checks. Yuck, five. It's all right. I got it covered. Good this thing will I be took a good chip one. who rolls a... Two. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled a, he rolled a yeah, three minus one. Desert as far as you all can see in every direction. So 
you know, Matid, we've got train tracks. We know where to go. Okay. Why don't we just follow the train tracks? We, I you love know, this idea. I love this idea. Let's just do that. K Magnifique. Huh? <laughs> Trey tra Magnifique. Yeah, whatever. Can we lower? Can, can you, Matit, can you fly me back down? I'll hover over them like a weird <laughs> scarecrow god and yep. give them orders. Yep. All right, we lower down. I'm still T-posing in, in Matit's arm, and I say, hey, get on your carpet. We're going to go follow the train tracks because uh, this place is driving us all insane, and I'm, I'm about to eat Barney. Okay. <laughs> eat Barney. <laughs> I fixed the train. Elga's already started. <laughs> yeah, I, we could do that. We'll follow and then I say we just we just follow the tracks. Is that the plan? Everyone's on board with that? Well, we're not on board because he shot us out of the train. All right. So we're I off. mean, we were heading that direction <laughs> anyways, right? So like we should probably still yeah. continue that direction. Okay. We go back to the car and we start following the tracks south. South. Okay. All aboard. You travel for several hours across countless sand dunes. Your joints are aching and your clothes are caked with sand and sweat. You peer across the horizon for any sign of progress, but all you see is more... Wait, that wasn't there before, was it? Something stands tall above the dunes, piercing the skyline with a sharp point. Is that a pyramid? <gasps> Ooh. Is it the pyramid? Find out on the next episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Wait, but we're not done. That's it for like the story portion of this episode. Oh, okay. Between the Tales episode. This is a, a Between the Tales episode. We're doing them a little differently this season. Do you all want to go through and talk about... I know we kind of hit on some of them, but do, and do you all want to go through and talk about the new abilities acquired here, your new level? I'm not sure what Matid got. I feel like I know what everybody else did, but Matid, what did you upgrade to? Matid got a couple of new abilities. So one thing Matid got was uh, Matid got um, ability called Deflect Missiles or Deflect Missile Attack. Whoa. And I can use my reaction to deflect or catch the missile when you're hit by a ranged weapon attack. When you do so, the damage you take from the attack is reduced by 1d10 plus 6. And if you reduce damage to 0 and I have a free hand, you can spend a key point to make a ranged attack as with a, a monk weapon. And uh, yeah, so I can kind of like, you shoot me, I can deflect it or, or fight back even. That's really handy. You pew pew right back. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, have like a subclass or is yes. there anything specific with... Okay. That's the thing is that I, I went to, what's it called with a monk where it's, it's not a subclass. Monastic what's, tradition. Yeah, but what's the term of that, that style of change to your character sheet? Monastic tradition. <laughs> oh, mine is mona monastic tradition. Monastic okay. tradition. <laughs> also, so we, I say we have <laughs> Micah with us now too. Micah Rising are joining us. Hello, yeah. Micah. Where did I come I from? You, yeah. <laughs> it's been here the whole I time. took on a monastic tradition as you do at level three mm. with the monk. And I took a way of the astral self. So it's just ghosts all the way down with Matid. <laughs> You're also sponsored by Lockheed Martin because of the, the anti-air uh, defense system that you now have. No, never mind. Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> Private milk. Let me ask Trevor about that one. <laughs> so with the way of the astral self, I start taking on like kind of little plussed up astral self abilities. And the one that I have right now is arms of the astral self. As a bonus action, I can spend one of those key points I keep talking about to summon the arms of your astral self. When I do that, I actually cause like, I guess a bunch of like force damage as it appears, because when you do so, each creature of your choice that you can see within 10 feet, they must be seen on a deck saving throw or take 2d4 force damage. So it must be Ooh. like, they like get like, they get hit by the arms yeah. of the astral self as they come out. And you can't see it right now, audience, but Chris is doing a weird multi-arm dance. I think he's trying to, <laughs> to visualize what happens. I think he is. And then for 10 minutes, you can use, one, your wisdom modifier in place of a strength modifier when I'm making strength checks. I can use the spectral arms to make unarmed strikes. And when you make an unarmed strike with the arms in your turn, you, you my reach is five feet greater than normal. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so a longer strike. And the unarmed strike you make with the arms can use your wisdom modifier instead of strength or dex for the attack and damage rolls. And their damage type is force. Wow. Got my champ over here. Yeah. Basically. You're a, you're a seraphim. You're like a biblical that's accurate a, Yeah, since angel. it's wings, it's very seraphim, uh, Angemon style. That's cool. So yeah, I got, I got more arms, more wings, more wings. What did Elga get other than Path of the Beast? So Elga got Form of the Beast. Form of the Beast. Which is a primal path choice, I believe, right, Micah? Yeah. Like I had, I had a couple of things to choose from for Barbarian. And you can do that bite, 
you can do that claw swipe, and then your tail does two things. What was it? We didn't quite get to that. It's an action and reaction. So action is like using it essentially as like a piercing damage, I guess. Mm. Okay. Could you stab him with people. the tail. And then the reaction, I don't know what the difference is. So the reaction is like if someone attacks you, you can have a reaction on their turn, and it allows you to use the tail to increase your armor class, basically. Gotcha. So it's like your tail comes out and like swipes away an attack that's uh, aimed for you. Oh, it looks like it adds plus four to hit. So would that just like add plus four to my AC? You roll a D8 Uh, on your reaction. Okay. And you add the result of that roll. You know, back in my student athlete days, we used to call this uh, beast mode. And then we'd, we'd say, we'd say beast mode. And then we'd lift extra heavy beast mode. Tail twins. Then I also got, as I mentioned, I have keen hearing now at level three for my inner bat. So that's going to come in handy. I also gained some more HP. So now I have a pretty beefy little Elga. What's your max? 45. What? You are more than twice my HP. Yeah. Plus she can swat away attacks and only takes half damage when they do hit. It's, uh, It's good to be a barbarian. Yeah. This is a very different character that I'm used to playing. I'm used to playing very delicate little characters that have like ranged attacks and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you need to you need to get in there and take the damage. I'm still not used to it of just like running in, but I feel like Elga is braver than I will ever be. <laughs> Me being Barbara. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's all. Of course, you mentioned this earlier. Your the number of rages you have goes up as well. Yes. 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 Beast mode. I remember seeing someone, I think it was on the Discord or the subreddit, mentioning like, oh, it'd be great to have Elga take Form of the Beast when she levels up. And I'm like, already planning on a baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of like social media and the subreddit, we're going to get to some questions here in a bit. We're just going to wrap up what everyone else's abilities are here. I'll blow through mine. All right. You can go through a roguish archetype. There were several to choose from. I went with Assassin, made the most sense for Chip because he was an ex-Assassin. So now he's kind of like... Over the course of the show, I want Chip to be regaining where he was, like where he was in his prime. And eventually it'd be cool if he's like past where he was before he met his dear wife. Got bonus proficiencies, which we all talked about. It was like assassinate. So I got to, um, you know, do like an extra special sneak attack thing. And creatures that haven't taken a turn in combat yet, I get to mess them up real good. And then I also have proficiencies in disguise kit and the poisoner's kit, which I haven't dabbled with. But uh, maybe we will later. And that leaves us with Barney Farney. So Barney learned level two spells and he got some extra spell slots and then some extra health. But the level two spells are cool. And just like knowing more spells is neat. So I'm excited about that. Cool. Yes. Spiritual weapons are really good spell to have and and to use. Okay. Well, on that note, let's go ahead and pick up some questions here from social media. We have questions that were submitted via uh, Instagram, Reddit, Twitter, just all over the place. I have a question here that came from uh, Instagram uh, submitted by Danny Rose Q. I feel like we've touched on this a couple of times in previous episodes. Maybe it's good to clarify, but how does everyone take notes and does everyone take notes? Barbara takes notes and I I have a a little uh, notebook that I actually purchased for this campaign. It's like a red notebook that's kind of it looks like old almost because I just felt like it'd be nice to have like a dedicated notebook for this campaign. I used to take notes on Slack, which is like our company messaging platform. I had my own channel that I made called D&D Notes. <laughs> <laughs> but then I realized like it's sometimes hard if I'm playing on my laptop to like minimize, open that up, type something out, bring my character sheet back up, blah, 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 blah. So I feel like writing it by hand, I remember it a little better. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I thought that was really unusual. I was going to bring that up about how you told me one time that you take notes by slacking them to a channel that you're the only person in. I mean, it's a, it's nice because then the <laughs> I think what I want to do is like when I have time, convert my notes to digital because it's easier to search things that way. Yeah. Like if I'm looking for like a place or a name or something like that. Control F. Control F. Yeah. So I'll probably do that eventually. But yeah, it's just I feel like I remember things better when I take notes by hand. I also take notes by hand. Uh, Mine's a mixture of just, I have a little notebook and it's a mixture of bullet points of stuff we've done as well as like I draw a lot, little diagrams of our encounters. I have a hard time visualizing everything we're doing. So hand to paper helps do that. 
Yeah, sometimes it's like you're putting us through a maze or something where it's like you turn this way and like, oh, it's a dead end there and you go back this way. It's sometimes easier to draw that out than to Mm. like try to visualize. I do it half for myself and half for I feel like we miss a lot of details that you're trying to give us to get through these stupid puzzles. And I'm like, stupid. I'm offended. (laughs) I love the brilliant. Yeah. How dare Mike is right here, John. (laughs) You're stupid. Yeah. (laughs) Get him. Got him. I have just a Google Docs that's stinky dragon second campaign notes and it's just a ongoing i just type anything it's not very well organized sometimes it's nonsense but it's because i do it keep it chronological i just like look at whatever the most recent stuff is to kind of like keep track of my notes great it's good for Mm -hmm. for you guys that's awesome (laughs) blaine just got he's locking key memory up in there you know he can't take notes because he needs to be eating his uncrustables i don't take notes i have my reasons uh one I am I'm fully, laziness. I'm laziness. I depend on my party, <laughs> which I think builds camaraderie, if we're being honest. Uh boom, flip it. Um I, I also like I am super immersed in uh in the role play and making sure I am present and I get distracted easily. So I feel like pulling off to a web browser can mess me up. I also want to just be like a knee-jerk reactions to jokes. And also, and I know this is going to sound like BS. They're so good, too. Thank you. I know they are. That's why I have the most Finish. inspiration dies. The The other thing, too, is like I want to be the lens for the audience. And if there's like basic things that people don't understand, you know, that like you have to remember from eight episodes ago, sometimes it helps having an idiot that's like, what is that? Because they might the not every remember. Man. Yeah. I'm just a pe- person of the people. I'm just a man about Walking town. You know, I like your justifications for being lazy. Oh, I do it for the audience. I'm a, I'm a lens for them. I do it for them. Also, I think I'm more prone to getting inspiration when I remember dumb stuff and the note takers don't. Because Gus is like, if that idiot can remember it, you know, wow, look at that. Look at him go. When we did the campaign that Chris ran and I was a player, I tried to keep notes in the notes section in D&D Beyond, mm. which is not. It's not great. Great. It's just like an empty, I mean, I guess there's like some stuff you can put in there, but yeah, uh, there's also just like an empty text box where you can type things. And it was uh, not the best. I think I probably would have done a, I probably should have done a Google Doc or or something else. There's so many tabs on D&D Beyond anyway, so it's hard to navigate like and see everything at once. So it's not really user friendly. It's also like, again, it's just you're typing things into a blank box. There's no organization to it really. Yeah. Like I like having like subheaders and bullet points and like all these different things that you can do. Mm, mm. Yeah. I guess like the smart, uh, not the smart, the over eager industrious thing would be at the end of every session, go back and organize your notes. But God, that's so much work. I mean, you start doing a it. sticky note for everything. <laughs> Just yeah. Put it yeah. on your monitor. <laughs> I've got a question from Instagram here from livid serenity. This one's aimed towards Micah. Did you grow up reading the dictionary for fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was totally what we did around the campfire. <laughs> you do know a lot of words. <laughs> I think my interest came a bit in high school and then like college, because like college, I was taking a class. I can't remember what class it was, but someone mentioned, I think, about Malcolm X being in jail and like read the thesaurus. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. So I like went out literally that day to like a Barnes and Noble bookstore or something like that and bought like a set of Miriam Webster's like dictionary thesaurus and vocabulary builder. And I was like, this is amazing. And I, I barely read it, but oh, <laughs> I, think of it. Of, I think of Malcolm X. <laughs> <laughs> Micah X. That's your new nickname. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I do love words and language and play on words and that kind of stuff. So that's something I really appreciate too is as a fellow pun lover and like <laughs> play on words lover, I get a little kick out of every little Easter egg of a pun that you throw in there every now and then. Thanks. And I know a lot of people do too. So uh, I have a question here. Another one from Instagram for the party. It's from Luz Alejos. What has felt starkly and unexpectedly different from this campaign compared to the last? I can give you a thought starter. I think you kind of touched on this, Barbara, a little earlier where you said that the character you play now is like very opposite than what you're used to. A lot, someone that gets a lot more like up in the mix. Yeah. So I think I think we're all playing pretty different characters in terms of like functionality compared to the first campaign. Rather, I do feel like though we for both the first campaign and second campaign, we're still I think involving our personality in the characters still and like things that it's hard to get away from. Like I feel like John, you mentioned this a few times, how you at some point want to play a character that is dumb and like doesn't move the plot ahead (laughs) because like 
you're really good at moving things along, which we do need that desperately. But in terms of like the story and like the campaign itself, something I really enjoy about this one campaign two, is because it's like based on a lot of existing lore, like Dracula, Frankenstein, like all these like horror tropes and stuff like that. There's like some, I guess, like things we could decipher or like figure out before we actually like figure it out. Like we know Dracula is a vampire. We know Frankenstein is or Frankenstein's monster rather is like a thing that was cobbled together and is like an experiment. So like there's like things based off existing lore of these known characters that we could kind of allude to. Yeah. You know, whereas the the first campaign was like no idea what was going to happen. I I was actually going to say kind of the opposite. Oh, really? Okay. Of that. Where I feel like the first campaign was set in a like fantasy more st- I don't want to say standard, but you know that when you think of a fantasy world, like it's a like high fantasy, high yeah. fantasy world, right? And so to me, that I, I feel like I had more bearings on like just like what to expect. I don't know high fantasy and just like and then this being kind of a a hybrid of fantasy with like horror old. Sci-fi. I feel like I know the world less if that makes sense. I love it though. I'm having so much fun with this world. And like the characters in it. And I don't know. I think it's just super fun. I think that the the like kind of hammer films background of it all is a lot of fun and like the classic monsters. But I think from a character perspective, the thing that I've had to retool my brain towards is Chip being a nice guy and not being a, a punk like Kyborg. So like approaching things from a place of like love, understanding and like, let's figure this out together. But yeah, it's it's also really hard to be an assassin when he's not super skilled. So like eventually I'd like to start killing people for real though. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just killing them with kindness. Yeah, I want to actually like kill him. You helped kill that bullet. Yeah. Just rest in peace, Sandra Bullet. Whenever you all are are playing these characters, you know, obviously you get in a character and a big part of it is the accent that you use when you speak as them. In Instagram, Derek Moretime asked, what's an accent you for sure do not want to do for a character? I think it would be painful if I tried to do a British accent for a character the whole time. <laughs> um, you could be a tiny little Cockney boy. That's true. I could. I, I feel like my go-to British is Cockney when I do it. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, God, now we're going to clean this mess up right yeah. here. Something <laughs> Dick Van Dyke-like. But I feel like that would get quite bad. <laughs> I, maybe I'll try it at some point, but I don't know if I could, like, do that for an entire campaign and make it believable. Probably any ethnicity that's not my own. I'd probably steer clear of that personally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because of the way that my voice works, it's hard for me to be to do like a, a good falsetto. I crack a mm. lot. And so I think it would be funny, but also difficult if I were to try to do something that's more whimsical, falsetto-y, less lower voice. Like I was actually trying to stretch my voice's like pitch. That would be hard. So maybe that's what I could do next time and be even just don't do an accent. Don't do any weird way of speaking. Just try to uh, pitch up and be that way the whole time. A little bit of a, to reverence another show, a little bit of taco from Adventure Zone. Mm -hmm. Mm, I guess where I had to like swap between two different extremes, you know, like maybe this was more from a DMing. I remember doing the, the, that one off that we did with the the bears. Chosen ones. Oh, the bear heist. Yeah. And like I'm trying to have like, conversations with two different accents as NPCs was breaking my brain. Like when I was doing, trying to do, I think I was doing like a shot, trying to do a bad Sean Connery and also a Morgan Freeman. And they were like talking to each other and that like broke my brain. Yeah. So I think that (laughs) just two different accents having conversations with each other. Gus, do you have any accents that you would struggle with? I think I, I, I share John's pain of trying to speak like in a higher register or something falsetto I, just because of the tenor of, guess. of our voice it's, it's awful oh, help me because you do you crack a lot when you're doing yeah. like hello <laughs> so that's an interesting question you asked blaine i was uh, i saw this question on the list i wasn't gonna get to it but i will ask because you kind of segued into it on twitter creeper cry asked can we get the gust cut i would love to hear him speaking as brink or sleek or some of the other npcs <laughs> and i think that would actually be disappointing because one, since I know it's scratch audio, I don't put a lot of effort into it. And two, I always forget the voice I use, so it's always different every time <laughs> I'm doing it. So there's no consistency. You would not want to hear that. It, it would not be good. Yeah. Sometimes you might not do the accents. It's just kind of the energy that you bring behind a thing. Like you can kind of, yeah. we can decipher who or what it is 
Like, I think, like, uh, Lil Jimmy is the best example. I was going to say, to to call out one instance where you did do a voice, Lil Jimmy's right there. It wasn't even a voice, though. It was just, like, it was just Gus bringing on a different kind of, like, vibe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet, Lil Jimmy. Super optimistic. Yeah. (laughs) I will say, too, to add on to that, after having listened to episodes and knowing what certain characters are and who's voicing them, when Gus speaks and that, I kind of, like, fill in in my brain sometimes the right speaking. voice yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Honestly, i think gus does a great job of like yeah oh yeah being the npcs we're not uh, in the game you, anymore I, right I, now I, I, he I, can't give no, you inspiration I'm, yes I'm we don't do that. I, I feel <laughs> that's that's I, that's like the part i always like struggle with the most well i think it's great i think it does the job Thank of like you. putting us in the moment yes not always easy thank you i think we have time for maybe one more question here this is uh, aimed a little more towards micah this is from instagram as well from uh zoboda what was the inspiration for going with classic horror for the current campaign setting i had a couple ideas that i i think i'd pitch to y'all for what we could do with this campaign and inspirations were kind of they might be obvious to me but like sherlock holmes is a big inspiration that kind of mystery radio drama kind of stuff i listen to a bunch of those on like spotify and all the classic universal kind of monsters are, are, are ones that kind of come to mind. I've tried to like look at a bunch of different takes on these monsters as well to figure out what kinds of Easter eggs I want to plug into this particular world. Things like that, like more investigative kind of world and murder mystery-esque, if you will. And so, yeah, I like looking up all kinds of things, whether it be items or places online of from Reddit to books to all that kind of stuff to see what I can draw from because there's nothing new under the sun, but you can always make it your own, give your own flavor, take a trope and kind of put a twist on it. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's something I really enjoy doing. I do like the noir setting. It's just fun. I can imagine yeah. like Chip as a private dick and he's in his office and a lady walks in just like, she had four eyes and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brain's oozing out. I think, if I'm, yeah, that makes me think of like Batman the animated series in the 90s mm. is really an influence uh, just a master of a of a cartoon of yeah, an animation Bruce and Tim. just all everything's dark everything's like uh, mystery you can each episode is its own kind of arc story arc and stuff everything everything about that kind of speaks to like that kind of flavor uh, now i want to see our characters in the bruce tim style like the batman yeah. the animated series style of animation that'd be so cool mm-hmm or Star Trek when like Picard becomes what is his name Dick something and he becomes like a, a detective in like the oh, 50s yeah. and stuff like that. I forgot about that. Yeah, wow. Well, I think that about does it for our time for this episode of Tales with Stinky Dragon. Tune in next week to find out what's the, what's the deal with those pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a really exciting announcement. I don't know if you saw it on social media, but we announced a brand new show. A brand new show. That's a right, Gustavo. That's right, Barbara. Just audio? No, no, John. It's called Stinky Dragon Adventures. It's a oh. full-length puppet show. <gasps> hey, hey. Puppets. puppets. That's right. If you like our uh, puppet videos that we've made, um, it's with the Infinites. So you'll get Gum Gum, Mud, Bart, and Kyborg. <laughs> oh, you're serious <laughs> right now. Uh, Kyborg uh, going on adventures. It's okay. Uh, we can so edit out that that pause. We can edit that, it out. It's no, really a pregnant <laughs> pause. Make it longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and then they'll be going on adventures. We'll be having that coming out in November. We're super excited about it. So, what do you mean going on adventures? Going on adventures, full eleven-minute episodes of adventures. Basically, it's an adaptation of the Infinite Campaign. Right? Yeah, ah, gotcha. Baby. Nice. I'm so excited. I, I, we love making those puppet videos, and we know how much you guys uh, listening love those puppet videos, and a lot of you found the show because of those puppet videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, we're really pumped for this. I was talking to Ben about it, but it feels like a like a passion project, even though we're all like, this is like our job. And it's really fun because like everyone's, it's all hands on deck, Yeah, you know, from conceptualization to puppeteering to editing. It's it's a lot yeah. of fun. And we're really excited to get into it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We'll go to your phone and we'll load the video for you and put it right in front <laughs> of you and show you. Yeah. yeah. We've been working on it for a while and have, are super excited to finally be able to say that it's coming. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, If uh, enough people watch our adventures with puppets, we promise after that we will do adventures with puppies. (gasps) Puppy adventures? Puppies. Yeah. Stinky dragon puppies. Make sure you tune in if you want puppies. You don't want to hear about how we got the kyborg dog, though. It was. Oh, uh, God. (laughs) Oh, my God. All right. Well, check it out starting in November. November. We'll have more exact details soon, but stay tuned. 
This episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon was produced by Ben Ernst, written, edited, and composed by Michael Reisinger, with additional editing work by David Sonnier. Tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. <laughs>